We continue to preview the 2024 college football season, and our stop today is Little Rock, Arkansas. It is a privilege, very much a privilege, to get to visit with the coach of the Arkansas Baptist Buffaloes, Coach Richard Wilson, and the team in its fourth season in the NAI. Coach, first off, thanks again for taking time with me today. I really appreciate the time that, that you give spring already in the books. We generally talk about spring first as we preview, so I want to do nothing different with you. Tell us a little bit about your spring and and, uh, how you've progressed then from having just those youngsters, and now you have a little bit of experience. Well, Joey, it was was still a challenge. I think you and I talked uh, uh, last year about the challenges we had of uh, transitioning from junior college to a four-year institution, I mean a four-year program. And uh, there were still challenges this spring. Uh, Believe it or not, uh, there are so many young men who, even at our level at NAIA, are being affected by the portal mentality. You know, everybody wants to try to better themselves. Everybody wants to, uh, for the term that the kids use, they want to get paid. And so uh, uh, it doesn't happen for everybody. But the reality is, is that dream is there. And so you can't take that dream away from, from the young men. And, and uh, uh, some of them leave prematurely. And, you know, and they really need to stay here and grow where they're planted and give themselves a chance to, you know, mature. But we had a, a couple of guys that had a situation where they thought they want to move on. And so uh, we ended up with some other guys who thought that Baptist was a, an attractive situation. And so it's kind of like you get them moving out, but then you get some guys who see this as a situation where they want to move back in. And so it was an interesting spring. It really was. Uh, but we, I thought it was productive. Really do. Well, Coach, last season, 3-8 and eight overall, 1-7 and seven in Sooner Athletic Conference play. And I, I wanted to address that as well because it was the first season for Arkansas Baptist to be in – conference play as as a part of the NAI as a part of a four-year program and you know you were talking last season I recall that uh, just it's it's a different ball game then going from that independent schedule to a conference schedule talk a little bit about that and being in the SAC yeah it was a lot different because uh it, it, if you look at things on the level where you're at it was like an SEC schedule for us because now all of a sudden you're playing everybody every week that has something to play for. And then you find out when you're in that independent schedule, you could take a break one week and, you know, play somebody a little bit lesser than you. And then maybe two weeks later, come back with a, you know, a a formidable foe at NAIA level. But this year it was getting pounded week after week and it showed up because we ended up getting injuries and uh, guys who are a little bit sore and couldn't go the next week. Uh, plus, uh, the first game of this past year, we started out with a Division I um, a foe. Uh-huh. We played Houston Christian, and uh, they're a Division I program. And, uh, of course, at our level, you, you do it for two reasons. You do it, number one, because you're trying to sustain your program, and so there is a, a financial gain from playing a, a, a school that size. But the other thing you do it is you try to brag and tell your kids, look, you know, you may have – and your mind felt like you got overlooked by this particular uh, competition level, or this is your chance to see what it's really like. And so even though we only see it for one week uh, and uh, Houston Christian plays it for 10 weeks, just like we do at our level, it is still a selling point recruiting wise for Mm -hmm. our program. And so not only did we go through that the first game, but then all of a sudden then you go into a, a rugged schedule where you just don't get any rest. And from that week on, you're, you're pounding against the best in the, the Southern Conference and, uh, or the Sooner Conference, I might say. And uh, uh, our guys found out it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. There are some there are some very good teams in the Sooner Athletic Conference. And, and uh, you know, seeing uh, once again with uh, three at the top there, uh, when 23 was all said and done and, and just, you know, Trying to get somebody get this is a, a league that I believe could and and should be a maybe a two bid league as as you go on. So yeah, your competition is tough there. We're visiting with Coach Richard Wilson here on Midwest Sports Net as we preview the 2024 college football season, and we also want to today recognize that it is Memorial Day. 
and we're very much thankful for those who have given their all in the, the service Absolutely. of the country to sacrifice for us so that we could even have this conversation today. So, uh, Coach, I did want to take the time to, to honor that. Yes, uh, you took us through the, the – uh, or take us through, if you would – uh, a little bit of a preview of, of what we're going to be seeing then for 2024. I know you mentioned Atavian Ray uh, prior to the season last year, and he came along, had some production for you as well. He'll be back to uh, be a part of that offense. Take us through your offense. Yeah, so uh, offensively, we, uh, we when you and I talked last year, I, I was uh, probably cautiously very optimistic. Uh, I thought we were sitting on uh, just a just a bomb ready to explode, and uh, uh, again with a different type of schedule, uh, and then more demanding. Uh, we actually, I think, uh, last year I was telling you of the the guys that we had coming out of spring. Well, we had uh, we felt like to mature that team up. We knew Atavian was going to be electric, which he was again this year. Uh, but we went out and, and we surrounded him by, we said, where can we mature the team the quickest? And and so we uh, uh, went out and got a, a two junior college quarterbacks. Matter of fact, three junior college quarterbacks. And then we had a quarterback who had had experience from the previous year. So we thought we were sitting really, really good. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, we just things happen. And uh, one of the young men – uh, decided one, two, three, four. That's too many for me. So I'm going to get out of here. Uh, the next guy in junior college did not academically perform like he should have. So we had to set him down. And then the third junior college guy, he, he bumps up and he was the third guy coming out of spring. He did a great job against Houston Christian. And then in the first quarter, he pulls his hamstring. And we think it's just, you know, a twick and he'll be back the next week. We don't get him back until midseason. So uh, from our second game on, we end up playing with a freshman uh, re wide receiver at quarterback. And so uh, our challenge this spring was saying, hey, we just can't afford to go through that again. And so uh, we had a good spring at quarterback. We're awfully young there right now. Uh the two men that we worked with was one of the one of the guys who's a wide receiver who took over at that position. Uh, his name is Lamont Kelly, and uh, Lamont had a pretty good spring, a uh, solid, I'd say. And then we had another young man who moved over from a uh, uh, defensive back, and he had played quarterback in high school. So at least we had a spring to work with him. And his name is Hollis McEwen. Uh, one of the guys that we were really surprised with, we had a young man transfer into our program, and uh, his name is uh, Chris Bale. And Chris is a young man from the state of Arkansas. And so Chris had a really good spring. And so we got competition started back at that position. We got a couple of kids we signed. We're excited to try to get them in here uh, for freshman workouts this summer because uh, uh, some of them are going to choose to go to summer school on their own. And it gives us a chance to do some things with them if they're in school. Uh, we can't have a, a legal practices per se, but we can at least, you know, give them drills and mm -hmm. watch film with them and just do some things to try to get them a little bit more acclimated so they're ready when we come uh, time for two a days. Yeah. Coach, uh, you know, the offensive production there is it's almost always predicated on what you can do when you have those uh, offensive linemen as well. Yes, sir. How, how are you building there in, in that facet? Offensive line was probably our bright spot uh, this past year. We ended up losing uh, Malik Stubbs, who was a uh, – uh, ended up making uh, honorable mention uh, in Suna conference uh, competition. He's a man. Uh, now, he's a guy that uh, you can just only hope to – uh, plug somebody into that position because I just don't know if we can replace him in one year. He was just that effective. Uh, we lost another guard, uh, uh, a young man that I thought had tremendous uh, potential. Uh, his name was uh, Keonta Starks. Uh, uh, he got caught in a situation where he thought the portal gave him a situation to jump up. And and if, if he jumps to a high level and successful, I'm not mad at him uh, because uh, – he still came here to our program and gave us 
you know, great opportunity to, to try to be successful. Uh, we got three of the five guys returning. Uh, we've got uh, our two tackles. One of them is Bradley Brown. Uh, Bradley's a, a big man. Bradley's about 6'6", six, six, about uh, 270. and He played very well. Uh, Bradley's coming back. He went through spring. He had a good spring. Uh, the other tackle is uh, uh, Delion Madrea. He's another really good size kid. Uh, Madrea's about 6'5", about 285. And uh, these guys really, really were great for us this year. What we've got to do right now is is build back up the middle. You know, they say you know, uh, not only in football, but in baseball, when you're good up the middle, you got a chance to be good. And, and like I said, we lost Malik. And so we've got to find a guy that can have the tenacity Malik had at center. But then we've got to rebuild those two guard positions. Now we've got a, a young guard who's coming on really good, had a good spring. Uh, his name is Tory Brooks. Tory is a huge human being. Uh, Tory is about, I'd say, 6'5", about 320. And so his deal is just getting reps and getting better and getting better. We still got to find a replacement on the other side of him. So when I came out of spring, as far as the line, I felt good with our cornerstones. That's what I call them, the two tackles. Felt really good there because we got two guys with experience who've been in the heat of the battle before. Uh, I think Tory Brooks can be a good guard. He's just got to get more experience. But I'm really, really concerned with that center position right now. We've got to have somebody to come on quick and in a hurry at center. Uh, but do I think we uh, are going to be bad at line? No. I think we, we still got a chance to be pretty good in the offensive line. Coach, the, uh, there are – I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. I'm the just last gonna... guy I wanted to talk about was a, a young man by the name of Cameron Cotton, and Cam is from New Orleans. He was a freshman this year and played. He was our spot guy when everybody, whenever somebody got a nick and uh, he he's a guy that actually can play center guard and tackle. And uh, he moved around and was effective. Right now, Cameron had a problem with his weight. He came in as a freshman, and he was about 265. And then he went through some illness this spring, and so he's lost down to about 228 or 29. So we just got to get him eating some beans and bread and, and get some weight back on him. But he's – uh uh. He's, I'm looking for him to have a good year also. Well, good. Well, Coach, and, and by the way, that's not something when you talk about someone having a problem with their weight, you, you went the other way. Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> usually you talk about that going a different direction, but uh, I'm, I, I'm sure that you can help build him back up. We, with the Sooner Athletic Conference, there are some teams that can put some points on the board. And, yes. and that's that's an area that that obviously again week in and week out, you're playing against some tough uh, opponents there. Talk about what you have on the defensive side of the ball. On defensive side of the ball, I'm I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, uh, I lost uh, again to the portal. Uh, a young man that uh, ended up uh, transferring up, and uh, sure gonna miss him. But uh, uh, like I tell, I always tell them, you know, if if somebody wants you and there's an opportunity, we're not gonna stand in your way. Uh, but he was a, a honorable mention. Uh, performer for us so we're going to lose him in the middle uh then uh we we got our defensive line coming out of spring we ended up having a couple of freshmen that we recruited that we thought they had a chance to be pretty good we'll have to see what they do on the fire but i'm very excited about what they did in spring one of those young men is travis luster and uh travis uh had a great spring uh he is a guy that I say when you talk about you want somebody who can go from point A to point B really good, that's Travis. He can run. And so uh, that's the one thing I liked about our defense coming out of spring. I thought we could run pretty good. Uh, in On the inside two techniques, we'll have uh, uh, Jarrell Smith. Uh, he's a guy who was a redshirt freshman last year. Uh, he's a big physical guy. Jarrell's about – 6'3", about 320. He should be a guy that should be able to anchor down the middle for us. Jarrell had a good spring. Uh, another young man that really came on for us is uh, 
a guy that we brought in from a prep school, and his name is Victor Edwards. He came in for, uh, from one of the prep programs, a uh, grade 13 type program. And mm -hmm. Victor uh, had an exceptional spring. Uh, Victor just has to learn, uh, you know, what it takes from day to day to grind and how it's a little bit different, you know, because when he was at prep school, they kind of had their own program. Basically, it was kind of like you play football and you kind of don't do anything else. Uh, this spring, he had to learn how to get up on time, uh, uh, be accountable and be there on time and then follow through and uh, make sure you go into class and, yeah. uh, you know, so he had to go through the time management thing that, that most guys, you know, have to address. Uh, and linebacker will be young, but I like some of the young guys we got there. Uh, one guy that had an exceptional spring is a young man that came to our program last year, and he actually redshirted and stayed around. And, you know, most people won't do that in this day and time. But his name is Julian Gutierrez, and he's a guy that, I'm going to tell you something. He, he's an exceptional athlete. I, I just can't wait to get him on the field. And and then I'm also excited about him because he's a great student. And uh, so we're excited to see what Julian is going to do. Uh, the other linebacker, we're young, but we got a guy named Tietrich Mizell, uh came in from Atlanta, Georgia. Tietrich did a great job, did a great job. And I mean, uh, again, we didn't get a chance to see these guys strike because we didn't actually put them in pads but we did a lot of spring drills. And so you can kind of watch their reactions to everything. And so I'm just excited to see if what I know as a football coach and what I've seen my whole life, they got the intangibles right now. And I think those guys, those two guys got a chance to be special. Now, the secondary is where I thought we took a big jump. Uh, we lost, again, a couple of two guys that I thought were, if we had got them back, uh, I said, boy, we're going to be outstanding in secondary. But, again, they thought they had an opportunity to jump up to another level. Can't get mad at them. Uh, but we had some exceptional young men come in. And I just watched their athleticism. I watched the way they play the football. They can flat fly. <laughs> and and one or two of them got linked. Uh, two of them are 6'3", are or better kids. And so okay. I'm excited about the secondary. Uh, uh, in the secondary, we got a young man that came in, again, from a prep school situation. His name is Malik Williams. Malik had a, an exceptional spring. Uh, with, uh, one of his uh, teammates that they knew each other and they ended up rooming together, but Chris Frank came in from a, a, also a prep school situation. And uh, those are the two guys I'm telling you about that are more the 6'3 guys, long arms. And, and uh, the thing they're going to have to learn is – uh, that when you play in this conference, uh, quarterbacks have great time. And that's one thing that I was really impressed with when I watched the quarterbacks in this conference. The coaches do a great job of they don't wait until the receiver gets open. They actually throw on time. And so it's deceptive. And sometimes when you're 6'3", and you get out there and practice and you're playing against younger quarterbacks, you just think you can always save yourself by, well, I'm 6'3", I can just reach out at the last second and get that ball. But when you start playing teams that throw it on time, you're going to think that you can reach out and you're going to forget that old rule that you got to stay deeper than the deepest. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you reach out and then you're going to find out your reach was a little too short. And so that's what those two tall guys are going to have to learn. Uh, I think in a, in a prep school level, they were able to out-athlete a lot of guys. Uh, and even if they let a guy get by them, they were able to make up because of their length. Uh, at this level, we got some people in the Sooner Conference that will just blow their doors off. So they're going to have to learn more fundamentally. Uh, in the, at the safety position, we had a young man come in, transferred in. He had, Now, he was different. He had been at a Division II level. He decided to come to NAIA level. And usually – Guys do it the opposite way. Uh, but we have a young man named Xavier Branch who's going to be playing safety. We're really excited about him. Xavier seems to have that. You know, you can't take a guy's head off anymore because of the rules, <laughs> but he's aggressive. And plus he can run and cover. And so you always need that guy because you're trying to keep the, 
the offense is like you said, from going up and down the field. So you got to have some type of shell coverage. So they just can't raise up and throw it out there quick, but you got to have a safety guy on the inside that when they do run the ball, he can come down and be your extra linebacker. And, and Xavier has shown signs that he's that type of guy. And so Really excited about those guys. And uh, another guy that I'm excited about is a guy named Torian Williams. He's another guy that redshirted. And, again, I'm so proud of him because that's what you have trouble with in this day and time. Everybody has a microwave mentality. They mm -hmm. want now, now, now. But we've got a couple of guys who have sat and waited their time. Uh, Tavari Williams is one of those guys. Now, he's another guy, 6'3", and uh, great length. and uh, uh, it amazed me how many hand uh, balls he got his hand on this spring. But it is ama what amazes me even more than that is when he gets his hands on the ball, he he catches it. You know, most guys bat it down or fumble it or something. He looks like a wide receiver playing DB, but he's got a defensive mentality because he's another one like uh, Mr. Branch. He'll knock your block off. Uh, and I saw that last year when he was redshirted. So I'm just excited about those guys back there. I just hope that Coach Bailey can keep them coming on and getting better. And the one thing that I kind of skipped when we were talking offense, Joey, is I didn't want to leave the wide receiver crew out. So oh, I want to no. make sure I talk about them. Absolutely. Okay. Go right. Hey, go right ahead. That's I mean, you know, talk, okay. talk, talk about them now because you're already talking about one of your defensive backs that can catch the ball. You, you definitely don't want to leave out that receiver group. Right. Now, when we flip it back over and start talk about it, you talked about Octavian Ray and, and and the praise I had for him last year. Well, I think I got about one or two of the guys just like him. Uh, now, again, we won't know until the bullets fly. But guys who are athletic, the thing about Octavian that amazes me is when we were independent uh, back in 21 and 22, I mean, truly independent schedule. And we played a couple of uh, division NAIA schools out of Center Conference. We played uh, Sagu and we played Langston. Mm -hmm. And one thing I know about those two schools, on defense, they can flat fly. And uh, Octavian was the type of guy that the reason I got so excited about him, he's one of the few guys that if you watch film running the football, he took one about 65 yards against uh, uh, Sagu. And Sagu really had a good defense. Mm -hmm. And then uh, against Langston, he took a kickoff all the way back and was practically untouched. Now, that doesn't mean we won the game, <laughs> but <laughs> his individual talent showed up. I think I got one or two other guys like that. Uh, and, and what I'm doing with Octavian, and I'm doing with this other guy who is Tavion Rupert. They both run tailback, but Joey, they're so elusive that I've had to use them at, at receivers also because they got great hands. And so um, outside of Tavian Ray, uh, Tavian Ray, I want to bring up the new guy is uh, Tavian Rupert. He's a young man that we got out of prep school, and uh, he played this year, and uh, he just wasn't the highlight guy. But it was good that he got in the games and he made the jump in spring. You know, you see a guy that plays for you in the fall and then you wonder, is he going to stay the same or are you going to see that quantum jump in spring? He made that jump. And so I'm really excited about him. Uh, Tavian Rupert, he's a guy that we need to keep our eyes on. Uh, at the wide receiver group, uh, one guy that had an exceptional spring is uh, a guy by the name of uh, uh, Devontae uh, 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 Mr. Jacobs, I'm, I'm sorry, his name's eluding me right now. Uh, Desmond Jake, De Desmond Wilkins, Desmond Wilkins, Desmond Wilkins had a great spring. Uh, you know, when you talk about the uh, uh, game that we won in the Sooner, and then the uh, the other games, two games that we did win, uh, Desmond showed up, and he showed up big. He's a young man. Desmond's about six three. Uh, Desmond's about. 195, 200. The thing I like about him, great mentality in the weight room. Now, Joey, he's one of those guys that's got a chance to make himself into something special because he can run, 
He's got length. He's got height. If you watch him lift weights, he lifts weights the way you're supposed to. And, and I just keep wondering, what is he going to end up being? You know, if he gives himself a chance to develop, mm -hmm. he's, he's going to be an exceptional player. Exceptional. Uh, uh, also at receiver, we had a young man that played a little bit for us last year. All the kids on the team call him Parlay. Uh, that's his nickname. But his name is, uh, 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 his name is uh, Darius Jacobs. And uh, now Mr. Jacobs, he has a great opportunity. He's the guy that is a true six, four and a half. And so he gives you a chance that when you get the one-on-one -on -one situation, I'm trying to tell him, quit trying to think that you can be the speed guy because he thinks he's a Tavian Ray. He's really <laughs> not a Tavian Ray, but what he is, he's your jump ball specialist. Because when you give him that 50-50 ball, what I'm trying to tell him is you got to make sure that you're posting up like that guy in basketball. Mm -hmm. And when that quarterback gives you that 50-50 ball, you got to make sure that you come down with it every time. Yeah. And so uh, Mr. Jacobs had a great spring. Uh, another young man that I'm really excited about at receiver is a young man by the name of Jeremiah Rice. Uh, Jeremiah came in last year straight out of high school. He's from Georgia football system. and uh, He's just one of those guys that when you see him walk around campus, he just won't say boo to anybody. But he has a different personality when he gets on the football field. And, and one thing I'm going to tell him, uh, say about him is he's one of those few guys I've seen. He has the ability like Octavian. Uh, you can put him in a phone booth and you still may not touch him. The difference is Octavian is a weight room guy. Octavian's a power lifter. He was actually a power lift in high school. If I can get Mr. Rice to start digesting weights the, the way Octavian does, uh, Jeremiah Rice could be a very, very special receiver. Uh, another young man I want to mention that had an uh, exceptional spring uh, at receiver is uh, uh, I'm trying. his name is eluding me right now, but uh, uh, Samaj James. Uh, I'm really concerned right now, and I don't want to put Samaj's business out there, but I'm going to challenge him on this program. Samaj is going to have to challenge himself in the classroom. But now, athletically and football-wise, special guy. And we've kind of put him at that H-back guy. Uh, we try to use him kind of like Kansas City Chiefs use Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that can move. Uh, he can come out of the backfield on the short passes, but he has the ability to run down the field passes also. And so that's kind of an overview of, of our guys and, and where we're at right now, Joey. I love it, Coach. I absolutely enjoy it. And, and I've, I've, I've not seen – well, you've seen a little bit, uh, you know, maybe of Otavian on film, but just uh, the rest of them that you talked about there, obviously haven't seen it yet, but I feel like I'm already starting to get to know them, so I appreciate – you taking yeah. us through there and, and getting uh, giving us an overview. So not too far away. We're around three months out right now from the first game of the season. I would say mm -hmm. another thing, too, you, you're going to need uh, a new kicker. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Norvay, David, I was bragging on him last year on the show. Still bragging on him. I like David. Uh, David decided to move on. And so right now we're in the, the hunt, you know, for a couple of guys. Matter of fact, I uh, can't mention anything, but one of the guys I'm supposed to be talking with his mom when you and I get through. And mm -hmm. so I'm really hoping that I can get him. But uh, uh, I feel like that recruiting wise, Joey, uh, I think this is one of our best years recruiting because we've spent the last three years. How can I say it? Trying to. Uh, Keep the car running around the track, coming off for a pit stop, you know, jacking it up, just trying to put on what we can. I think this recruiting class we're getting this summer gives us a chance to finally build because we haven't had a, a great influx of freshmen before. You know, we've just tried to find guys where we could uh, and try to make things work. Uh, I think I mentioned to you on the show last year the most challenging thing that I've had to do here at Baptist is go into an NAIA program or NAIA mode 
without going four years of club football. Because most people, when they change divisions, we change from junior college to NAIA. Well, most people go club football and they build all their classes and then they start. Uh, we had two unique things happen. NAIA, I, I applaud them. They tried to help us. Uh, when we were going from junior college to NAIA, they said, we'll, rich, we'll grandfather your JUCO kids. Okay. Our problem there was, again, in this portal mentality and today's mentality, our junior college kids did not want to play NAIA because their attitude was, Coach Wilson, we came to play junior college ball for you because we think we got a chance to go D1. And we feel like the only reason we didn't go D1 was because of our grades. And so that's their mentality. So we started this thing with primarily, like I told you last year, freshmen. Mm -hmm. We tried to keep those freshmen engaged, but as we were keeping them engaged in 21, 22, and 23, we really didn't have a chance to go out and get another big freshman class because we were dealing with attrition. Mm -hmm. So we were always trying to pick up that guy who was a transfer guy, uh, a pick up a part here. And so right now we're going into year four and we've got a core, but we're excited because this is the first time where we put about 95% of our emphasis in, we went out and got a strong, solid freshman class to bring in. And so I think I'm not ready to talk about some of those guys right now because I just want to get them to campus. But I think some of those guys will be some guys that when you and I talk next year, you'll be saying, Coach, you didn't say anything about this guy. Well, Joe, he was a freshman, but we thought he was pretty good. And so I, I, I think we got. I think we're going to have a great. Matter of fact, I know we got a good recruiting class. No doubt about it. Okay, well, Coach, let me let me tell you that uh, you have an open invitation to be on here anytime. So uh, we don't have to wait till next year. It's all right. Hopefully, we get a chance to talk again, maybe even okay. mid season or, or just prior to the season, whatever the case may be. Let me ask you then, <clears throat> as we are at the the end of May right now. First game of the schedule for you, August 31st, kind of a week zero-ish, uh, although uh, lots of schools have that that week uh, where the schedule begins right there, that final Saturday of August. Uh, you all are taking on John Melvin. And, again, 3-8 and eight last year, 1-7 and seven yes. in Sooner Athletic play. However, uh, one of those wins last year was against a team that uh, it's going to be Sooner Athletic play this year and, and that in North American. So, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the opening to your schedule as you get to take on John Melvin. Okay, John Melvin is. Uh, uh, I watched them on film last year. Uh, one of the open date games that we picked up was Centenary College, and Centenary mm -hmm. was starting football for the first time. And uh, you know, I explained to that gentleman. I said, "Are you sure you want to play us?" And he says, "Man, I need a game really bad." And I said, "Well, you're going to experience what we experienced." And he said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, you're going to bring in a whole group of freshmen." And I said, I've got freshmen, sophomore, and juniors. I don't have a senior class here. I said, but we're going to be a little bit better than you. And he says, nah, 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 we'll play you. And so they had a great team, Centenary did, and they came in undefeated. But because we had been through some pretty rough struggles at NAIA, you know, we kind of went through them, okay? Well, the reason I brought that up is because John Melvin was one of their opponents. And so when I watched John Melvin, I was very impressed with what I saw with Coach Lee and his program there. Mm -hmm. They're young, but they're talented. And so it it's even though you say it might be a tune-up game for us, it'll be a challenging game because they had some very good athletes on the field last year on the film I saw. And I'm pretty sure he kept those guys and he's added to it. So that'll be a good game for us. Now the second game is you. Is it okay to go on with the schedule? No, please, Coach. I, yeah. it's, it's, I okay. want to hear from you. Okay. Now the second game that's going to be challenging the next week. Uh, we get a chance to play. Uh, one of the things I always challenge our kids on is we're an HBCU, okay, historically black college, and uh, so my kids kind of have the mentality that every now and then they like to play a swag school. Because they look at what 
uh, Coach Sanders was able to do at Jackson State. Mm -hmm. They understand the legacy of what's going on at Grambling and Southern University, and they look at a little bit of Florida A&M and teams out on the East Coast at HBCU, uh, Howard, and South Carolina State. Well, this year we get a chance to play University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. And they're about 30 minutes up the road from us, and they're in the SWAC conference. So uh, in Arkansas, that's a big game uh, because all of these kids know each other. Yeah. And so I think a lot of the freshman class that we're recruiting, I think they're aware of that too. And so the, it, was, it was an exciting thing for them when we recruited them to say, well, guess who we got a chance to play this year? And they said, who? We're going to play uh, UAPB. So that's a big thing here in Arkansas, okay? And so – we play them, and I'm hoping that, you know, not wishing anything bad upon them, but the week before they play us, they've got to play the Hogs, University of Arkansas. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully they'll get a little starch out of them, but they, they've got a good team. they got a good program, and it's a step up for us. Again, it's one of those programs where we're trying to make sure we finance everything we need to do here. But at the same time, when I go out recruiting, I want to tell my guys, I've got an exciting schedule for you, and I'm always going to have something that's going to challenge you. Well, this is the game that's our challenge next year. Okay, after we play them, we'll take an open date. Uh, I, I was really disappointed with one thing, Joey. We actually had a contract with Prairie View the next week. Wow. And we didn't make the decision quick enough. And so in Prairie View's defense, they are going to end up playing, I believe they ended up playing Michigan State. And so oh they decided God. to take a money game. You got me? Yeah. But that would have been a, another situation where our kids would have said, wow, we like that. That's a challenge for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just go ahead and take an open date. Uh, I believe that will be on the 14th. And then on the 21st, we've got to go down and play, which has always been a tough game for us. Uh, Sagu, who I found out is no longer Sagu. Uh, nope. I guess they're not going to be Southwest Assembly guys. They're going to be Nelson. They're Nelson now, yeah. Still, yeah, still Nelson still University. They just, it's just a, just a name change. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, our, our third game on the uh, 21st will be against Nelson on their home field. So that'll be a challenge, okay? And then after we play Nelson, uh, we'll come back home, and then next week we play Oklahoma Panhandle. And that's always a challenge. Uh, I, the one thing I remember about Panhandle is they were aggressive defensively, but they had a little quarterback. That guy, he, he's something special. And so I'm thinking this will be his senior year unless he opts out and decided to go for something better. But uh, he's a really exceptional player. So we'll uh, come back home with Oklahoma Panhandle. And then uh, after Panhandle, we usually end up playing uh, uh, Texas Wesleyan. And that, that was rough last year because Panhandle was really good. And then we had to come back the next week and play Wesleyan. And so we got to go down and play them. Now, did, did I hear it through the grapevine that uh, Coach retired down there, their head coach? If, uh, if I, I can't break that news, I don't know it. So that, that would be I don't know. I mean, again, that's – and, again, I don't want to – <laughs> Said whether he did or not, they got a great program. Yeah. But uh, he had called me early in the year, and and I think we're going to end up having to move that game to a Friday night game, which will be unusual. Uh, but it was some scheduling problem mm -hmm. that they had with the people that they work with there in Texas, and it's their home game. So we agreed and told them, say, hey, yeah, we'll if it helps you guys out, we'll do it. So we go to Texas Wesleyan, and then after Texas Wesleyan. We play Texas College, and we'll have to go down there this year and play them there. So this will be our first trip. The way the schedule ran, we played Texas College uh, independently in 22. And then when we got in the conference in 23, they came to us in 22, and then they doubled back to us in 23. So we'll be taking our first trip down there. And then after that, it doesn't get any easier for us because then we got Ottawa coming in town. Mm -hmm. And uh, – Boy, they, they spanked us last year. That, that was a they, tough they, game last year. Yeah, they spanked us pretty good. And I was so proud of our kids because you uh, you know the whole saying, you don't know what flavor tea you got until you put it in hot water. And uh, 
we got put in hot water out there and we could have shut it down after that game. Uh, but uh, we came back the next week and uh, the same challenge will be this year. We'll play Ottawa. Then we got Langston. And so those will be uh, two of your more athletic teams back to back. Only this year, at least we get Langston coming to us. Okay. And then after Langston, we've got to take our first trip out to Wayland Baptist. So we'll go out and play Wayland Baptist. And they, they, they got after us last year. We had to play them in a driving rain, rainstorm, but to their credit, they did what they had to do. And so uh, we'll have to be ready for them when we go out there. Uh, after we play them, uh, we actually swapped a game. We were supposed to have an open date. So our open date was supposed to have been, I think, the first week of November. But Louisiana uh, College, who now I think they've changed their name mm -hmm. to Louisiana Christian, uh, they were kind enough to swap out. So they come to Little Rock, and we play a home game against them. And then the last game of the season, uh, we go down to Houston and play uh, 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 the North guys, what's up? North American. The North American out of Houston down there. Mm -hmm. And did you hear anything as to how far North American has gone as far as I know they were uh, hoping they were going to get into our conference this year? Yeah, there's uh, – and, I, again, I wish I could could break news for that uh, as as well, but it, it seems to be – you know, you get that SAC logo, that Sooner Athletic Conference logo there beside the game, I believe, on, on their schedule – right now beside your game. And so I, I think they've, uh, you know, if they're not there, I'm going to talk to Coach Martin, <laughs> the conference commissioner there in the Sooner Athletic Conference sometime soon, and I'll find out a little bit more before the next time I say anything. But they do have the the Sooner Athletic graphic beside y'all's game. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you something. That, they have done a great job there. Uh, uh, my hat's off to that program. Uh, uh, anytime you see a program that's upstart, uh, I've got my heart out to them because that's how we started. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden uh, we're playing against people who have been doing this a lot longer than we have. And so uh, just to see the talent level and uh, that they've accrued there in a short amount of time, uh, his coaches have done a good job of recruiting. Well, Coach, that sounds like a fun schedule. That's neat. To, I, I, that Pine Bluff game should be interesting as well. That should be a lot of fun for you and for, for – Oh, it's, it'll be a lot of fun, yeah. but we – we got, State. we got to be ready because those type of games, if you're not ready, they can get out of control on you. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. But it's, it's a challenge I think our kids want. And I know as a program, it's a challenge we need. Well, Coach, I, I appreciate your time, and I'm so thankful. And and what a lot of folks don't know, if, if by the way, if you're still watching, thank you, you're a trooper. Uh, but uh, we, we had challenges just getting on the air. So Coach and I have had an opportunity <laughs> to it for quite a while today, but I have appreciated every minute of it. Coach Richard Wilson, thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us today. We know more about the Buffaloes than we did, and it looks like it's, it should be a promising year ahead for you and for the future as well. Because you said you're building, and it looks like you're doing it the right way. So I appreciate that as well. Coach Richard Wilson with the Arkansas Baptist Buffaloes, thank you so much for being with us. Stay here on the Summit. Joey, thank you, man. And I, I thank you for everything you do, not just for our school, but for every school uh, that you give them a format, you give them a platform, and uh, the kids at this level deserve it, just like a kid in the SEC or a kid – in the Big 12, uh, the kids that we have at NAIA level and whoever else that you're helping, they deserve a platform just like anybody else. And so thank you for making yourself available to do that. And I know the Lord's going to bless you for it.